Winter is here, friends. The days are short and slow, and to put it simply, I am thriving. The second half of 2023 really wore me down, and I've been enjoying my January days resting, being, and surrendering to the seasonal pull to slow down. You could say I am in my hibernation era. I'm holding space for those of you who struggle during this time of the year, and I hope this video can provide you with some inspiration and better yet, serve as a permission slip to slow down and rest this season. Since the holidays ended, I've been making it a point to dedicate my weekends purely to rest. Part of this includes putting a temporary pause on making YouTube videos so I can fully recharge after producing so much content in December. Filming this video has been a slow entrance back into creating videos and I'm trying to take my time and enjoy the process. My weekend mornings have been a sanctuary to me where I sleep in, read in bed, do a little house tidy, put the dishes away from the dishwasher, load the dishwasher if there was any dishes from the night before, and then I just hang out on the couch most of the day. Taking the time to do this, to just veg out on the couch, has been crucial for my healing and recovery from the holidays and 2023 in general. If you've been around here for a little while, you know that I struggled with burnout last year and I've been trying to heal and figure out a new way of working and living, filling my days with reading, drawing, playing Animal Crossing. I just got a Nintendo Switch for Christmas and it's been so fun. Having this downtime has really allowed my mental health to reset, but also just like my nervous system, like the physical, my physical body just needed to chill out, man. One of my goals this year is to cultivate work-life harmony, meaning I'm in search of feeling balanced and aligned with my personal life, work, and creative pursuits. How can I tend to all of my creative pursuits while also showing up fully in my personal life and at work? This is a question that I've been pondering and seeking answers to this year. Yoga and meditation provides me that quiet space to surrender and just be. These practices have changed my life since making them a habit several years ago. A way for me to slow down and reset for the new year is doing Yoga with Adrian's 30-day yoga challenge. I think this is my fifth or sixth, maybe even seventh year doing it. I've lost count. And this year, I've paired my yoga with a 28-day meditation journey that is hosted for free inside the Insight Timer app, which I love this app for daily meditations. There's also, you know, sleep meditations and white noise and there's courses on there. There's so many lovely things on this app. And I usually meditate for about five minutes every morning, but this specific challenge called the Reset and Refresh Challenge is forcing me to get out of that comfort zone with 10 plus minute practices designed to help me reset for the year but also dream and take inspired actions towards making those dreams a reality and since i'm leaning back into manifestation and visualization work this year this challenge has been amazing and perfect and just making me get so excited for this year and like the first week of the challenge i cried like every single day like in a good way i was doing shadow work guys i was letting go of all the ick from 2023 and it was just it still feels amazing and this work has also been really helping with my confidence that was something i've been struggling with as well in recent years and within just a couple weeks i've just been feeling so much more excited and belief in myself for these goals and dreams i have and it just feels so nice Nature is therapy for me, friends, and after some really cold weeks this month, it warmed up and I was like, I have to get outside. So we went on a nice little walk. I love the combination of movement and listening to my favorite (laughs) tunes and soaking up the sunshine and just sitting in nature. It just brought me so much joy to do this. And I think it's been over three months since I actually went outside on like a nice walk. And within just a week, all the snow that we accumulated 
pretty much disappeared, although I found a few bits of it, and a deer popped out on my walk. As, as they do. And there were all these birds and geese flying and the sun was out and it just made me feel so alive. And I really needed that after these really long yet short wintry days. If you can get outside these days, friends, I encourage you to do it. Winter is the best time to cozy up with a cup of tea and pull out a good book and I just love winter because it allows me to not have FOMO. I feel like in the warmer months I have FOMO because I feel like I need to be out and about doing things and winter just gives me that permission slip to stay inside, cozy up with a good book, have my hot cup of tea, and I don't have to be anywhere, I don't have to do anything, and it's the ultimate way to relax and just be. So I've been reading about four books at the same time this month, and it's a vibe. I'm a mood reader, you guys know that, and usually I like to read a book, finish it, but I've been just going through a few different books, and The Frozen River by Ariel Lahon Lahon has been like my favorite book this month. I will talk more about this, but it's a historical fiction taking place in Maine about a real woman named Martha Ballard, who was a total badass, and I just love it so much. <laughs> I also read Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, which I know is a super popular book and a lot of you guys have probably read it or want to read it. Let me know if you have read it and what you thought of it. And I just love the whole premise of it being like a low stakes cozy fantasy and George got me the book for Christmas and I just started reading it one January day and it was hitting all the right feels. Um, I think like halfway through the book, I started to get bored and that's when I started to read The Frozen River and that picked up my attention way more. And it did take me a little while to finish Legends and Lattes. So overall, I think I gave it like a three star. It wasn't a total fave, but it definitely fit the vibe for January and resting and all things cozy. And I do want to read the second book in the series. Remember this book, guys, from Vlogmas? I thought it was a Christmas book, but it actually takes place in January at an ice festival. And I have been struggling to get through this. And I'm wondering if I should DNF it. Is 2024 the year Sheila actually DNS books and lets go of my stubbornness around finishing a book? Probably not, but just letting you know. I've been wanting to read this all month and it's just been not, not hitting my expectations or my attention or anything. So that's been a struggle. <laughs> Back to the Frozen River, which is definitely my favorite book of January and probably a top book of this year already. So when I went into this book, the plot sold me, but it took me a little while. I think like halfway through the book, I realized that it was about Martha Ballard, who was a real life woman in 18th century Maine. And if you're a lover of American history, you might've heard of A Midwife's Tale, which is the biography of Martha Ballard by Laurel Thatcher Ulrich. I heard about Martha Ballard in undergrad and she was a midwife in the mid 1700s in Maine. She kept a daily diary, guys. And at this time, like women reading and writing was so rare. So somebody taught her to read and write and she kept a daily diary of everything she did, the baby she delivered, the baby she had to bury and things going on with her family and a lot of like crazy, crazy stuff, which is all in this book. So A Midwife's Tale by Thatcher Ulrich is a biography of Martha Ballard. So it's a nonfiction book and I've not read it. I think we had to read excerpts of it in my one class that I took, but this is such a great approachable way to be introduced to that history, to Martha Ballard and her legacy, because it's fictional and it's a lovely story. And apparently this author is known for writing historical fictions that like stay really true to the truth. But with this book, she did take a few liberties and outlined the changes she made in her author's note. I love a good author's note. So me being, a history nerd and storyteller. I just love the combination of 
the history and the storylines just colliding in this book. Martha Ballard's manuscript is digitized and available online at the Maine State Library. So now I have to go to Maine, go to Maine State Library and look at this book. And she wrote in like no consistent kind of, you know, way. So I can only imagine like, how painstaking it must have been to not only just study this book but just to open it and start reading it so shout out to a midwife's tale and laurel thatcher ulrich for doing the historian's work of chronicling the life of martha ballard because up until the 80s and 90s nobody knew who she really was until this book came out so i love that there's a re resurgence of martha ballard's history through the frozen river and perfect read for winter. I love reading bone chilling books <laughs> in the middle of winter and beyond like the historical fiction aspect, there's also a murder mystery. So we have that going on. I just loved it so much. So I highly recommend if you love any historical fiction books that I've recommended to you. The other, the fourth book that I've read this month is Unmasking Autism by Devin Price, which is a nonfiction. I've been listening to it on audiobook through Spotify's premium membership, which I guess just launched this new feature where if you have like the premium subscription, you have access to up to 15 hours of audiobooks every month. So I've been taking advantage of that. And this book is for anybody, whether you are autistic, you are exploring or discerning if you are autistic, if you are neurodivergent, or even if you're not, just to understand that the <laughs> autism is like a thing. So I personally last year like realized I am a neurodivergent person and I've been learning behind the scenes like what that means <laughs> and how I can live my life. So having these rest videos it's been so hard for me to talk about, you know, the rest aspect, but also knowing that I am neurodivergent and the fact that I need rest just because my brain is different than other people's has been an awakening in itself. And this year, I really want to, of course, share my journey of recovering from burnout, but I also want to explore more and maybe talk more about my journey of being a neurodivergent person and feeling more I guess confident to share that with you guys so it's out there i didn't need to make a big announcement about it and it just kind of came out through unmasking autism so yes and i just started reading justin ward's let us descend i'm gonna read this into february for black history month as well and i'm really loving this book it's a literary fiction and I feel like there's magical realism in this book. Let Us Descend is a reimagining of American slavery as beautifully rendered as it is heart-wrenching. Searching, harrowing, replete with transcendent love, the novel is a journey from the rice fields of the Carolinas to the slave markets of New Orleans and into the fearsome heart of a Louisiana sugar plantation. And so far within the first two chapters we've already seen our main character relationship with her mother and the realities of slavery and being an enslaved person at this time and it's just so heart-wrenching. So as we conclude this video, just a reminder to you guys that rest is important, rest is productivity, and it is just crucial if you are going through burnout or just exhaustion that you take some time for yourself to rest and recover and winter is just the perfect time to do that. I mean, earlier in this video, I talked about like I don't experience FOMO in the winter as much as I do in warmer months and it is so true. I just love the fact that it's like expected to stay inside and not do anything. It's been very, very healing for me and I extend a hug to anybody out there who is struggling right now through the winter time and just know that you are being held. And I'd love to hear how you guys are spending your January days. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I know it's summer for you guys, so let me know if it's actually not winter for you. I feel like the majority of my subscribers are in the Northern Hemisphere and we're all going through some kind of version of winter wherever we're at. So I would love to hear how you guys are doing so far this year, how you've been resting and relaxing and what you're looking forward to this year. 
Also, if you've noticed the background looks a little different, it does. I've been working on a big project this month, redoing my desk and workspace area and making it more of a dream workspace studio for myself so I just feel more inspired and excited to work on YouTube and creative things and just work in general. Like it's a whole multi-purpose area. So you guys can see a little preview of what that looks like. I still have some filming and organizing and drilling to do to finish that. But that video, I've been working on that also along with this video. And it's just been a new way for me to create videos while also trying to rest and not pushing myself to try and get a vlog done over a weekend or trying to do all this different stuff like in a week. But drawing it out over the month has been new and really energizing for me and I'm really excited to share that video with, with you guys once it's finished which I think at this point will be probably up sometime in February and I'm so excited. Send you guys lots of love and I will see you in the next one. Bye!